Continuing with discussing the pastimes of Balaram or Krishna and Balaram in Dwarka. As I said yesterday, we would speak with about Krishna in Dwarka in the morning and Krishna and Vrindavan in the evening. So following that same pattern. So speaking of Krishna and Balaram in Dwarka. And I very much appreciated the question that was asked yesterday, so I'm going to repeat the question and response. In Vrindavan, Krishna takes part in pastimes with the loving associates that are endowed with Braja Prem, and specifically because we were speaking about Balaram, the coward boys and their relationship with Krishna as in friendship and the unique position of the cowherd boys in Vrindavan to Arjuna Krishna outside of Vrindavan. But Shukadev Goswami speaks of the cowherd boys in Vrindavan because they were with Krishna constantly. At least during his Vrindavan pastimes, with with a kind of intimacy that's so unique that Shukadev Goswami speaks Krita Punya Punja. <laughs> How many pious activities have these cowherd boys undergone to have this great fortune? So the question was, wait a minute. This word punya is there and how is it that one can enter into the pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan from pious activities? So you can't by mundane pious activities because commonly we think of punya as material piety. Prabhupada writes, in Sri Ishopanishad, one of the greatest obstacles, there's many, but one of the greatest obstacles in propagating Krishna consciousness is people have an expectation that religious people are supposed to do humanity welfare work. And people ask, what are you doing? Have you been asked? I've been asked many times. There's this Culturally, at least in the West, built in is, in in India too, built in is this idea that religious people do welfare work. And in one sense, they're right. But in the bodily conception of life, welfare work means bodily welfare work. So, you know, helping people that are poor. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's this very strong ethic of Christianity is reaching to the poor. The Pope says it, the Catholic leader say it, they have whole divisions that just do that, Catholic charities. There's the Catholic Church, and separately, separate entity, legal entity is Catholic charities, and that's what they do. Just like YMCA. Young Men's Christian Association. Now it's, you know, gyms. But it started with, and then schools. And hospitals. So those are, you know, the, the Western version. And, you know, the, the classic for, uh, Vedic culture is planting trees by the side of the road and digging wells. And there's, that's pious. Not, don't plant trees or don't dig wells. Or don't make them. Just like in, in Vrindavan, some of you may be familiar with the Sandipani Muni School that's organized by a group of devotees, um, ISKCON devotees. And along with that, they have food for life, where they give blankets in the winter time 
to the widows and medical care and clean up the Parikrama path around Vrindavan and plant trees and in um, the place of Radharani's residence in Vrindavan, they t- took them a lot of time and a lot of money to find a place where they could get fresh water and they dug a well that the people in that village now can go every morning with their many, you know, many vessels of water and there's a little placard by the side taking you know, compliments of food for life, ISKCON food for life. So it's not to say don't do those things. Don't do work that's for the welfare of the body and the mind. Bhakti on to hospital. But when doing those things, Krishna Katha is essential. The chanting of the holy name and the message of Krishna and so forth. And then it's not just mundane piety, it's transcendental this was our discussion yesterday, transcendental piety. You're, I'm sure you're familiar with the verse from Canto 1, Chapter 2, where the process of bhakti is described and the word punya appears in that description of the process of bhakti. And it refers to the process of hearing Krishna katha. Shrin vata svakata Krishna. Punya. Shravana Kirtana. Now maybe the same individual that asked the question yesterday, how the cowherd boys become cowherd boys by punya, <laughs> may ask the same question about that verse. Why is this word punya there? Well, it's a different kind of punya than the mundane kind. The mundane kind is a reflection of the transcendental kind. For those of us that have bodies... We have bodies because we have material desire. And so the bodies are awarded to facilitate trying to find happiness by fulfilling material desires. Hint, it's not possible. You cannot find happiness through senses contacting sense objects with the expectation of happiness. You will not find it. Something is there, but it's not what real happiness is. It's the reflection of what real happiness is. It's imperfect. It um, covers one's consciousness of true happiness and our true consciousness, our true loving relationship with Krishna. In that sense, it's inherently miserable in the name of happiness. So piety that continues to implicate the soul in its affinity for matter, just a little elevated stage of affinity for matter, it's not ultimately beneficial for the living entity. Or in the language of Bhagavatam, it's kaitava dharma. That's heavy. Cheating. And just back, circling back again, we're expected to do cheating. Well, we can do beneficial works for the body and the mind, provided the center of Krishna and Krishna Kata is there, specifically Krishna Kata. Not just in the name of God, but, you know, we speak about him, he comes out of the box. <laughs> we engage in Krishna Kata. Because that's beneficial for the soul. <laughs> so that's what we're doing this morning. The, 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 the Krishna consciousness movement is based on paradharma. That's, that's what the Bhagavatam declares. From the very beginning. Sabai Pungsang Paro dharma, or dharma prochita kaita votra, paramo nir matsaranam satam. That this Bhagavatam prepares, not the kaita dharma program. So, 
What we're doing, just comment, what we're doing this morning is punya, transcendental punya. Just by sitting here and seeing pictures of Krishna Balaram and hearing the pastimes of Krishna Balaram, it's the same activity that the cowherd boys did for many, many, many lifetimes and then became cowherd boys. Instead of gathering together and considering how we can do some charity work for poor people. No harm in doing those things, just fourth time, provided that the center of Krishna is there. And Krishna Kata, because that's going to bring transcendental piety, punya shravana kirtana, ridyan takstoya badrani, Vidhunoti surit satam. So the heart can become fully cleansed of all misgivings, of all affinity for being the enjoyer of matter. That's the misgiving. It's a big mistake. And it causes us misery. You want to be kind to someone, relieve them of the root cause of their misery. Yes. So we're taking, we're doing pious work this morning <laughs> transcendental and then whatever our occupation profession or household work or whatever it is school whatever it is that consciousness can be with us in our life and transmit that consciousness to others just by carrying consciousness of Krishna and Balaram with us so it's an auspicious day Balaram's appearance day so doing this shravanam kirtanam or punya shravana kirtana on Balaram's appearance day about Balaram. Fantastic. Okay. So yesterday morning we discussed <clears throat> about this uh, one of the pastimes of Krishna and Balaram outside of Vrindavan in the Dwarka section of, of Krishna Balaram's pastimes. So we're going to now go back to the, the beginning of those pastimes and quickly touch on a number of them. This is a very beautiful painting, Pushkar quality painting very colorful and very nice, where Krishna and Balaram are enjoying majesty, Aishvarya, maximum opulence. There's still flowers, but there's other ornaments that are gold and jewels and fine cloth and etc. And they're respected and honored in that mood by the residents of Dwarka. Another very ancient painting. There's Krishna and Balaram on the right side. And there, of course, Ugrasena is the king. And um, Krishna was, was not the king in Dwarka. He had palaces, but he wasn't the king. He was a prince. Yet, because he's Krishna, he was at the center. So when everyone entered into the Sudharma assembly hall, Krishna took his place by the side of, and Balaram, by the side of Ugrasena, and presided over the affairs of Dwarka. We discussed Krishna yesterday. Krishna went to Dwarka. In fact, Dwarka was built for the purpose of giving protection to the Yadra dynasty when uh, simultaneously there was attack by uh, on, on Mathura for the 22nd time by Jarasandha and who was the other fellow? The other king? Kalyavana. Kalyavana. He was a Yavana, a very powerful 
Kshatriya, Asura. So Krishna arranged for Dwarka to be built, and he settled the members of the Yadu dynasty in Dwarka, came back and dealt with Kalyavana. And Jarasandha, we saw that nice picture of Jarasandha thought that Krishna had been killed in the fire as he had run from the battlefield and went up the mountain and fire was set to the lower regions of the mountain and Jarasandha thought Krishna was dead. Not possible. He doesn't have a body to die. But he thought he was dead. And then at that time Krishna and Balaram went to Dwarka. So that begins the Dwarka pastimes. We mentioned the first event recorded in the tenth canto was Lord Brahma requested the king of Raivata to uh, give his daughter Revati in marriage to Balaram right away, first first off. Then we also mentioned Krishna became then married to his first queen Rukmini. So just a little because there's a part that Balaram plays in all of this. Um, Bhishmaka, who was the king of the Vidarbha province, he wanted Rukmini to marry Krishna. But the elder brother of Rukmini, named Rukmi, he had a different idea, and he wanted Rukmini to marry Shishupal. Poor Rukmini, she had no interest at all in marrying Shishupal. And after she heard from Narada Muni about Krishna, she had given her heart to Krishna. So she composed a letter, a very famous letter, to Krishna sent to Brahmana to go to Krishna describing how she had no interest in Shishupal. She had given her heart to Krishna. Please come and rescue me. If you decide not to do that, then I'll just wait for as many lifetimes as it takes for you to accept me. If you decide to accept me, here's how you can do it. Come and at the time, just in the morning of the marriage and so forth and so on, she gave the details. And nice painting. The messenger came back. Rukmini was prepared. When she went to go to the place of worship, and on her way back, Krishna came exactly as was planned and hurriedly took Rukmini on his chariot and went off with Rukmini, kidnapping her. And the brother of Rukmini, this is where Balaram comes in, he went pursuing Krishna in his chariot. And when he caught up with Krishna, of course, how can you catch Krishna unless Krishna allows it? But um, mighty-armed Rukmi, dressed and wielding as the kings, I shall not again enter Kundina if I do not kill Krishna in battle and bring Rukmini back with me. I swear this to you. So Krishna allowed Rukmi to catch him or at least catch up with him, because who can do that unless, like Mother Jasoda, catching Krishna. It's not, not possible. The Upanishads say it. He overcomes all others running. So when Rukmi was captured by Krishna, rather than killing Rukmi, he disgraced him with his sword he cut off his mustache and patches of his hair and had him tied, as you see. And um, Rukmini pleaded with Krishna, don't kill him. Oh, controller of all mystic power, immeasurable one, Lord of lords, master of the universe. Oh, all auspicious and mighty armed one, please do not kill my brother. She was very clear about Krishna's majesty. It wasn't like the gopis. 
O Master of the Universe. You have the power to do whatever you want. Please spare my brother. Even her brother had, you know, didn't have her best interest. She was very compassionate. So Krishna did as you see. And Balaram then made his remark. My dear Krishna, you have acted improperly. This deed will bring shame on us for to disfigure a close relative by shaving off his mustache and hair is as good as killing him. For one who has once been honored, dishonor is worse than death. Balaram, it's a leela. He's the elder brother. He's scolding his younger brother. He normally never would do that, but he did that because it was part of a leela. And yet later, that very same Balaram killed Rukmi on the occasion of Aniruddha's marriage. You see the painting, they were playing chess, and Rukmi was cheating. Balaram detected he was cheating. He took his club and smashed him and finished him. So now... The occasion of Aniruddha's marriage is connected with who's the fellow on the right with so many arms? Banasura. Banasura. Banasura was a devotee of Lord Shiva. Banasura got a benediction from Lord Shiva that he would have so many arms because he wanted to fight. <coughs> Banasura had a, a daughter whose name was Usha. There's Usha. Usha started having these dreams about a beautiful young man. And in her dreams, she was having intimacy, loving exchanges with this man in her dreams. And one of her dear friends noticed there were some marks on her body and she asked, what's going on? And so it was Chitraleka. Chitraleka, she disclosed to Chitraleka, come on close. She disclosed to Chitraleka what was in her dreams. So Chitraleka was a bit of a mystic. You know about Chitraleka? So Chitraleka started making drawings of the man in her dreams. This painting, that painting, the other painting, and when she made a painting of a particular young man, Usha went, whoa, whoa, that's him. That's him. Chitraleka said, I know who that is. That's the grandson of Krishna. His name is Aniruddha. And if you like, I can bring him here. She was a mystic. She went and brought Aniruddha right before her dear friend Usha. And in Vedic culture, I'm sure many of you know this, the residential quarters of the ladies was in the inner section of the house, which men were not allowed to enter. This is even family members, what to speak of non-family members. And uh, there's Aniruddha in the inner chamber with Usha, enjoying together for days. Marks were showing on her body indicating something's going on. So Banasura went to see what's going on and this is what he saw. So he, he with his so many arms and so powerful, you see what he's holding behind him in, with one of those arms, this weapon. And um, big battle with Aniruddha. And Aniruddha was eventually imprisoned in the palace of 
Banasura. Four months passed and Aniruddha hadn't come back. He just disappeared. Nobody knew where he went. Finally, you know, they didn't send a text message, but they somehow found out, rumor had it, that Aniruddha is in the prison of Banasura. Ugrasena decided, get our entire army and we're going to go rescue Aniruddha. And so the whole Yadu dynasty army went to Shonitapura, the, the, the capital of Banasura, and a huge battle ensued. So because Banasura was a devotee of Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva came with Kartikeya and Ganesh, as you see, Ganesh down here. There's Kartikeya and Lord Shiva himself and his hordes of associates. And Krishna and Balaram were there along with all of the other warriors of the Yadu dynasty. Huge battle. This is directly a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Balaram fought with Kumbanda and Kupakarna. Don't know who those people are, but somehow connected to Lord Shiva or Banasura. Samba fought with Bana's son and Satyaki fought with Bana. And there's a particular passage because why would Lord Shiva fight with Krishna? Well, specifically our Acharya's comment it's uh, something, it, it, it's like Arjuna f- forgetting his position as Krishna's devotee and what his duty is. It was arranged by the internal potency. Similarly, Lord Shiva taking this position was arranged by the internal potency and by his mystic power. Krishna, there's Krishna, so that there wasn't any direct battle between the two. He just kind of nodded out or something. And huge battle ensued. And um, Samba, everyone was, the, 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 the whole army of Banasura was defeated. Krishna cut off all but two of the arms of Banasura. It was pleaded. Came, Banasura came before, well, the mother of Banasura, very interesting, came before Krishna naked so that Krishna would turn away and Banasura could be rescued from being killed by Krishna. And then Lord Shiva came before Krishna and pleaded for his devotee, Banasura, please don't kill him. As Rukmini had pleaded for the sparing the life of Rukmi. So Krishna is very kind. Krishna said, very well, not only I'll spare his life, but I'll give him longevity and you'll, he'll always stay under your protection. But he can't do these bad things anymore. Krishna is very kind. So, we often see Balaram depicted with his club. He was very famous for having instructed both Bhima and Duryodhana in the art of fighting with a club. But in addition to fighting with club, he's also shown with his plow. And with his plow, we saw this picture yesterday? Yes or no? No. Okay. There's a situation where Balaram demanded the return of Samba. So Samba had gone to enter into the Swayamvar ceremony of Lakshmana, who was Duryodhana's Lakshmana was put in prison. Excuse me. Samba was put in prison. Samba was put in prison. Ugrasena, let us get him out of prison. Take the, Balaram said, no, no, no. I have a relationship with Duryodhana. Let me go and try to make peace. I'll see if I can get Samba released. So the armies didn't go. 
Balaram went with ministers and some entourage. And they spent the night outside of the capital city of Hastinapur. And messenger was sent to Duryodhana. Balaram, your dear friend has arrived. So he sent the next morning. He sent messengers and gifts for Balaram. What good fortune that you come. There must be some reason. What is it we can do for you? The messenger was given the instruction, release Samba so that he can marry Lakshmana, your daughter. The reply, no way. We'll fight. There was no fight. Balaram took his plow and started dragging the entire city, the entire city of Hastinapur into the river. And as the whole city was moving, Duryodhana realized, "Uh oh, don't say no to Balaram, you're in trouble. And so they came forward and We'll give, we'll release Samba. Here's gifts of gold and jewels and, you know, what you requested will happen. So there wasn't a battle. There could have been a battle of Kurukshetra before Kurukshetra, but it was, it was resolved by Balaram and his plow. And so Samba and Ah were married. There's another incident connected with Balaram in relation to Dwarka, there was a a situation where after the marriage of Draupadi to the five Pandavas, there was an arrangement where made by Queen Kunti that Draupadi would spend one month with each one of the Pandavas. And when she was with one of those Pandavas, the others would not approach. They'd have nothing to do in, in direct affairs. So a circumstance happened where the Pandavas were together and uh, it was a month when Yudhisthira was with Draupadi. So uh, a problem came. Arjuna, being a Kshatriya, saw the problem. There were some cows that were being, and the cow herds were being attacked to steal the cows. So Arjuna wanted to get his weapons to stop the attackers. But his weapons were in the place, the chamber, where Yudhisthira and Draupadi were. So he went, just busted in and got his weapons and sent the dacoits off to protect the cows, Kshatriya. And then Arjuna said, I violated the instruction of her mother, so I have to purify myself. I have to go on pilgrimage. And Yudhisthira said, no, 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 it was your religious duty. That religious duty superseded this other one of upholding the word of our mother. And Arjuna said, no, 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 it was a violation of... Dharma, and so I have to purify myself. I'm going on pilgrimage. And many interesting things happens when he was on pilgrimage. And one of them was, he went to the holy place of Dwarka. And when he went to the holy place of Dwarka, he entered wearing the garments of a mendicant. And when he was there, because a mendicant had come, Krishna and Balaram immediately offered him great respect because a mendicant sannyasi has come. We should honor them. And when he was being honored, Arjuna happened to see the sister of Krishna and Balaram. And Cupid's arrow struck. He couldn't take his eyes off of Subhadra. Krishna detected that. So Krishna consulted with Arjuna and said, do you have attraction for my sister? 
yes, I have great attraction for my sister, for for your sister. So he, uh, Krishna went to his sister to see, does she have similar attraction? You know, the matchmaking program was privately behind closed doors being entertained. Well, yes, I, I have that, that sannyasi is, you know, he seems to like me and I like him. Not exactly a appropriate painting, but it's interesting of Indian artists. So Krishna, uh, Krishna arranged that Arjuna would kidnap Draupadi, excuse me, Subhadra. And when Krishna, excuse me, Arjuna kidnapped Subhadra, Balaram was furious. This is a disgrace. So gather the army, go cap so-called mendicant and Bring Subhadra back. So he had that idea, but he went to check with Krishna first. He's the elder brother, but he went to check with Krishna first. And he was very surprised. He was expecting Krishna to say yes, but Krishna said no. He said, I think it's actually very nice. In our Kshatriya community, when a girl is kidnapped by a great hero... It's very noble and very honorable. This is very nice. Valeron's expecting the opposite. He said, but, but, you know, he, he just kidnapped her. She said, in fact, it's so nice. We should not, we should go find him, as you're suggesting, but invite him to come back, offer gifts, and have the marriage right here. So, Balaram, not only was he surprised, and not only was he the elder brother, but the mood of Balaram is service to Krishna. He doesn't want something other than what Krishna wants. He wants whatever Krishna wants. Well, even if it was his idea was something other than what Krishna wants, he would submit to what Krishna wants. That's the mood of service. Very important. And so an arrangement was made where they were, um, this is a mystical chariot that could fly in the sky. Here's the residents of Dwaraka shaking their fists saying, come back, come back. And Arjun took off. By Krishna's arrangement, uh, on behalf of his sister Subhadra, Lord Krishna gave enormous treasury as a dowry to Arjuna and the took place in Dwarka. And then later Subhadra became the wife of Arjuna. Another pastime of Krishna and Balaram outside of Dorka. So Balaram is now um, in this mood of wanting to help Krishna, some discussion of could some arrangement be made where, because he had a relationship having trained both Bhima and Duryodhana in the art of fighting with clubs, he wanted they would not fight each other. But Duryodhana was obstinate and Bhima was had it with Duryodhana. He knew that there was attempted murder multiple times by Duryodhana. He wanted by religious principle, he wanted to finish him. So Balaram went on pilgrimage, he wouldn't take part in the battle. And in the course of that battle, we heard yesterday of when Balaram was at the Raivataka mountain, there was this encounter with, whoops, whoops, with Dvidvida gorilla. Balaram finished him. We had, we heard this yesterday morning. This is Dvidvida harassing the ladies of the Raivataka mountain. Balaram finishing him with his club. 
actually was with his fist. While on pilgrimage, Balaram killed Ramaharshan Sutta with a blade of grass. This pilgrimage that was going on. One of the places was Balaram went to where Ramaharshan Sutta was narrating the Puranas. He was a disciple of Vyas. And while narrating from the Puranas that he had been given to by Vyas, Balaram entered into the assembly and everyone rose except for the speaker. And Balaram could understand the speaker wasn't qualified to be the speaker because he didn't understand the purpose or message of the Puranas, which is to honor the personality of Godhead. So very adroitly he picked a little singular blade of grass, approached the, the asana where Ramaharshan was standing or seated and touched his heart and pierced his heart and he died at once. Bloody mess. So all the assembled sages were saying, what do we do now? We were, he were hearing very nicely, but I, he made an offense. Father Ram said, well, if you like, I can bring him back to life. No, 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 you've acted for, with your own purpose, but what should we do? So, Balaram suggested the son of Ramaharshan, namely Sutta Goswami, he can speak. This is, by the way, before the Kurukshetra battle. It's not the same as when Sutta Goswami is speaking before the assembly of Naimisharanya. Because Krishna and Balaram are still present. During this, um, travel, the sages of Naimisharanya approached Balaram saying that there's this terrible demon named Balvala, who is the son of Ilvala, and he desecrates our sacrifices on the new moon day and torments the, 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 the sages that are engaged in religious activity. Please come and protect us. Ram came on the new moon day, where it's the opposite of what today is. This is the full moon. On the new moon day, Balaram came, was there, and suddenly the sky became dark and winds and terrible substances were downpouring from the sky. Balaram, using his club, caught Balvala by the neck pulled him down from the sky. Here's the sages being disturbed by Balvala. And Balaram finished him with his club. Another pastime of Lord Balaram. Um, after the Kurukshetra battle was over, <clears throat> Yudhisthira is installed on the throne Balaram was there for that ceremony and Balaram and Yudhisthir are embracing. This is a um, very ancient painting showing this particular pastime. And then again, we're almost done. This is um, sages who were approached by young boys and young men from the Dwarka group of the Yadu dynasty, they were teasing or challenging the brahmanas. Samba came before them dressed like a woman in a sari, having a big block of metal in, in the area of his abdomen, saying in a high-pitched voice, uh, can you tell us, great sages, what will be the the gender and the quality of this newborn child? And the sages understood very well. It wasn't a woman. It was a spoof. They were poking on. But yes, we'll tell you that child, when the child is born, will bring the destruction of the entire Yadu dynasty. Uh, 
curse had been uttered. And so the boys went before Ugrasena and informed him of their mistake and the curse that had been uttered and asked Ugrasena what to do. So Ugrasena decided in consultation with his ministers that this lump of iron should be ground into little small powder and the powder then taken to the sea and tossed in the sea. So they did that and sure enough as the grains or little powders of iron washed to the shore reeds grew that were like iron. Then the Yadu dynasty went to that place we're going to visit that place when we go to Dwarka, where Prabhas Kshetra, very famous place, um, in the state of having a big festival, they had taken some rice wine and they became intoxicated and in a sporting way started combat with one another and they took these reeds that were made of steel and were bashing each other and bashing each other and the entire Yadu dynasty was withdrawn by Krishna's arrangement. And after some time, Krishna and Balaram also wound up their pastimes in Dwarka. So now we're just going to see some deities of Krishna Balaram. We'll start with Krishna Balaram in Vrindavan. Nice. This is a Janmashtami a couple years ago, uh, decoration of Krishna and Balaram. On the Chandan Yatra festival, they're completely covered in sandalwood. Is Krishna's flute even covered in sandalwood? It takes a week to produce all the sandalwood paste, but the devotees have great time grinding the sandalwood. Um, the, the place where the Krishna Balaram temple is, is a famous, at least within Is- ISKCON, famous history. It's in the area of Raman Reti. Prabhupada explained this was the reason why he had Krishna Balaram as the main deity is because the area of Vrindavan is the Raman Reti area of Vrindavan, which was a place where the cowherd boys would regularly come with the cows. And therefore, Krishna Balaram at the center. This is the cornerstone ceremony where uh, Prabhupada personally oversaw the laying of the cornerstone of the temple. He insisted with like a lot of vigor that the, the temple be completed in a timely fashion. And it was in a pretty intense endeavor. And then he personally presided over the ceremony of the installation and this is a photograph of Prabhupada performing the first arti for Krishna and Balaram. And during that inauguration ceremony, this very famous, famous painting or photograph, ladies up top, men and sannyasis down below, the opening of the Krishna Balaram temple and the installation of the deities. There's different Krishna Balaram deities in the world. This is in New Mayapur, France. Very, very beautiful deities. Here's a close-up of the same dressing. There's Krishna. There's Balaram's hand by his side. And Balaram, New Mayapur. And uh, at Govardhan Hill, there's an ISKCON project where... Krishna and Balaram Shilas can be found. Very nice, with nice backdrop. Uh, in Orissa, in Badrak, there's also Revati Balaram. Not Krishna Balaram, but Revati, Revati we mentioned, wife of Lord Balaram. Here is a nice photo of Lord Baladev in Jagannath Puri and our Iskan Rathiyatra with Lord Balaram, essential element. 
And uh, in Bhubaneswar, there's to the side, there's a Krishna Balaram deity. Um, in Jaipur, this isn't a good focused photo, but the next one is nice. In Jaipur, um, deities of Krishna and Balaram. There's Balaram and Krishna in Jaipur. In Mauritius, Krishna and Balaram are there. Um, New South Wales, Krishna Balaram deity. Close up of Lord Balaram carrying a club and Krishna carrying his flute. Mowillambar Farm. It's a farm project in New South Wales. And in the San Diego Temple, they have a Balaram Shila on their altar. And very nice Krishna Balaram Shilas from Govardhan Hill. And this is the last image. You recognize who the, anyone? Udupi Krishna. Udupi Krishna on different festive days is dressed in different ways because Krishna is the avatari. He's the source of everyone. And so on different occasions he's dressed differently. And here is Krishna, Udupi Krishna dressed as Balaram carrying his plow. So this evening we'll have a more...